Well, it has been a rough, rough start to the season. Let's take a look at the fixtures since the last time we met. Following on from the Bournemouth game, we did actually end up getting a win. A 3-2 home win against Spurs. Nasi Unavar, Kiyote from the penalty spot and Benoit Badiashila in the 91st minute to give us the win. Spurs completely dominated this game and did not deserve to lose. Schick had put them in front eight minutes in. Harry Kane in the 83rd minute. But we were fortunate and thank God for that. Next up was an away defeat, this time against Manchester United. We went 2-0 up inside 13 minutes. Unavar and Avci inside the 13 minutes. But Pogba, Douglas Costa and Marcus Rashford gave them three goals in a game where Paul Pogba absolutely dominated. We bounced back though with a thump and 4-0 victory. The best performance of the season by an absolute country mile. Nasi Unavar, Mathis Pujer, Benoit Badiashil and Sedet and Avci with the goals all in the first half. And uh, we ran out comfortable 4-0 winners. We then got beat in the League Cup third round against Championship opposition West Brom. We did fully rotate the side, but we had more than enough quality to be able to beat somebody like West Brom. And unfortunately, we couldn't and we're out. Next up was a 2-1 home defeat against Liverpool. Badia Shailad put us in front eight minutes in, but Sadio Mane as brace on the 19th minute and 56th minute meant another defeat. And finally, away from home against Chelsea. The games that we've started the season with have been absolutely unbelievable we have had one of the toughest starts of a premier league campaign in terms of the quality of the opposition that i can remember in recent memory sergio gomez and luis montanillo for us montanillo coming off the bench and getting that goal and i think he's going to get the start on the basis of that martinez with a brace and andreas christiansen for the goals for chelsea 92nd minute winner for them was a little bit crushing and that sees the premier league table looking like this we sit in 13th two wins and four defeats in the first six games but there were against Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United and Bournemouth. I mean, the Bournemouth one's inexcusable, but the rest of them you can sort of understand. And the wins against Spurs and Everton are both at home, both absolutely massive and very good results against established Premier League sides. Now, of course, in the last episode, the transfer window wasn't complete and we didn't end up signing the centre-half that I showed you. We ended up signing a right winger instead and a goalkeeper. We'll quickly go through him. Jose Manguia from Marathon for 500k. He's the Honduran first choice goalkeeper. Uh, he's got a good bit of potential about him sitting in the under 23s. Probably look to loan him out maybe in the January or next season. But again, 500k for these kind of youngsters is sorts of transfers that you're going to see me do often, every season. And the main guy, Usman Diawara, will be in chasing him all summer. Um, he currently plays at Spal. He's, well, he was playing at Spal. He's Birkenese. So a bit of a random nationality. 16.75 million ended up getting him. When I was going after him at the early part of the window, they wanted £80 million plus. But because of our continued interest, he did end up kicking up a first time request and a transfer. And £16.75 million was the agreed fee. And this is him. 18 years old. He's in the uh, national side. He's already got five senior caps. Classed as a wonder kid. His winger attributes are absolutely brilliant. Especially in his technicals and his physicals. Mentally, he's got some work to do. But he comes in and he's automatically our best right winger. And he will be starting the vast majority of games for us. Him and Reese Nelson will really be competing for that right-hand side. Uh, it does mean that we're probably going to have to move on uh, Abdul Qadir Omar. He was decent for us last season. I think he got a good few goals. Seven goals and five assists in 33 Premier League games. But he's had a pretty severe injury over their summer transfer period. Two months he's still currently injured with it. And once January comes about, he's worth £18.5 million. I think I will try and look to move him on and recoup some money for us to be able to reinvest elsewhere in the squad our transfer budget now sits at 6.45 million quid with only 33,000 pounds available in the wages so if we are to make any substantial moves further in the season we are going to have to sell to be able to fund that ourselves in terms of finances we're sitting on a 58 million pound balance you never know they may come to me in november or december and say here sam there's another 30 million pounds to spend that would certainly be nice but um yeah our Champions League group stage draw has been done. Let's go take a look at that. We have Borussia Dortmund, who will be playing today, Benfica, and Monaco. I actually think this is a massively, incredibly difficult draw. Usually, you come up against Real Madrid, one of the top seeds, a team that you're never going to beat. And then maybe somebody like Benfica, Monaco, or Dortmund in the second seed. And then usually some random team from any sort of European country who... You, you probably feel like you've got the better of. So you've got at least one whipping boy in the group. We are the whipping boys in this group. <laughs> uh, 
if we are to even come third, that will be a very big achievement for us. Um, I am aiming for third. We never know with a good few performances and, or, and unlikely wins we might get second. I'm not sure about that, but let's get to today's game. It is against uh, Borussia Dortmund and we will then be facing Leeds United at home in the Premier League. So we've got pretty much a full strength side going into today's game, but Diawara, the new signing, is does have a slight knock, so he's not involved in today's squad. Reese Nelson will start on that right-hand side. It'll be Butlin in goal, Christensen, Perez, Badia Shale and Miranda. Perez, by the way, has signed a new deal. He only wanted 56k per week, so he was willing to talk to me once I said I'll offer him that, and I've completely removed his minimum fee release clause, so absolutely perfect. Uh, Marcus Antonio will start in defensive midfield with Pugier playing just in front. Reese Nelson and Unovar on the wings with Sergio Gomez in behind Avci. Now, Avci has got a lot to prove to me, at least, especially with Montanier, the way he's been developing. Look at him now. He's looking absolutely fantastic with still plenty of room to grow. He might end up getting himself some starting game time if Avci doesn't have a very good game in today's episode. Uh, looking at the Dortmund side, then it looks pretty much standard. Udekai on that left-hand side doesn't look right to me. I mean, he's decent enough, but uh, he's definitely more of a centre-half. And they don't really have regens in their squad right now. So, all familiar faces. Let's get into the kickoff and see how we get on at home against Borussia Dortmund. So, Boris has just announced that her hairdressers can open on July 4th. I think I will be first in the queue. This hair is doing my absolute tits in. Anyway, let's get to the game. First highlight of the game is five minutes in. Pugier pinches the ball in the midfield. He's got eight as a space to run into on this left-hand side. He goes for goal. Probably shouldn't have. Christiansen with the throw-in on this right-hand side. It's played in, cleared by Fian. It's played back out to Christiansen on this right-hand side. Tries to get past his man. He plays it back to Antonio. The ball's played in and cleared by Rainer for Dortmund. And they are going to break down this left-hand side. Adyemi switches the play. Miranda does absolutely fantastically to bring that ball under control and go forward for us. Pugier to Gomez. Nice little through ball for Unova on the left. Sedetti's there. Sedetin, Abchi, whatever his name is, should be scoring. And by the way, I know my uploads have been pretty sketchy recently. I have just got myself a new puppy. If I remember, I'll put a photo up of him right about now as Abchi just scores. Maybe after. But yeah, I've got a new puppy and he's taken up a large amount of my time. He's basically like a baby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but thankfully, I will be able to find more and more time to get this a little bit more consistently, bring you a daily once again, maybe in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I just apologise that uh, I didn't really inform you of that before, but it'll be coming back soon. Avci, third goal of the season. We go 1-0 up against the top seed. 26 minutes gone. Dortmund playing it out from the back. They need to get themselves a goal to get back into this game very, very quickly. But their player forward has been poor. And Pugier sends the ball through for Avci. And he heard us speaking about putting Montenegro up top today. And he's got his second goal of the game, his fourth goal of the season. There were two big signings, really, in terms of regens this season, combining and getting ourselves 2-0 up in front against probably our toughest opposition. Now, we are at home, so obviously that's a massive advantage for us. But uh, getting three points in this game was not something I was expecting, not after the way our season has started. Strakosha in goal is on a 5.1, that is pretty dismal for them and half time has come and gone Sunderland 2 Borussia Dortmund nil. fantastic performance from the boys so far let's see if they can continue it in the second half 55 minutes in we have our, oh Miranda Miranda's getting sent off our left back has been sent off now what changes do we make do we take off Sergio Gomez I don't think I want to I'd rather Sergio Gomez stays on the pitch we'll take off Pugier in the centre of the park. Even though he's been having a decent game. We'll bring on Josh Tymon there. Um, we'll have to change things a little bit. Make us a little bit more supportive. A balanced team mentality to start with. I don't want to straight away go to um, counter or defensive. It'll just invite too much pressure. I'll lower our tempo as low as it'll go. And uh, see if we can kill this game a little bit. 64 minutes in now. We have ourselves another highlight. Christensen with an absolutely dreadful throw in. Throwing it straight at Matt Hummels of Dortmund. And now they're coming forward down this left-hand side. Julian Brandt into Gabriel Jesus. And his fifth goal of the season brings Dortmund back into this. Now do we start panicking? I'm panicking. Cautious. Oh, straight away. It hasn't even... Oh, it did take effect. Uh, we've blocked that, though. Avci's going to get there. Down the left-hand side, he's going to have no support. Or very little. He drives into the box himself. He's on his hat-trick. And that was a poor strike. 
15 minutes left in this match. I've got a feeling Miranda is going to cost us the three points in today's game. Gruwich to Reina to Jesus on this left-hand side. Can we get the block in before the cross comes in? He plays it back to Udekai, Julian Brandt, back to Marco Gruwich, and they're just sprinting it about pretty nicely. And the ball's played in. Good save by Butland. He falls over after that. Thankfully, we do manage to survive. We're going to make a couple of changes. Um, Nasi Univar can come off for Oliver Batista Meyer, and I'm going to get James Garner on for Max Antonio in the defensive midfield role. We'll make him a little bit more defensive than um, who, what's his face, Marco Antonio was. Eight minutes to go. Can we survive? They're on the attack once again, this time down the right hand side. Yavos to Gruwich. The ball finds its way to Adiemi in behind, and that is a fantastic, fantastic finish. Karim. Adi Amy's fifth goal of the season, level things up for Borussia Dortmund. And Miranda has massively cost us here. There's no two ways about it. We were in complete control of this game. 2-0 up, absolutely cruising. He gets sent off and now we might not even get a point. Jack Butland's big kick does find one of our players. Thank goodness for that. Batista Maia gets past his man. Can't get past Kanji though. And Emre Chan can start a counter-attack for Borussia Dortmund. Brilliant challenge by James Garner to find Reese Nelson, who finds Avchi in behind for his hat trick. Come on, son. Sadat and Avchi's fifth goal of the season gets three to dear. He will be starting in the next game against Leeds United unless he's injured. And his hat trick puts us three to open for him. What should we do? Defensive. Uh, waste time, maybe. Let's let's waste some time. Short now will pass, and we do not want to overlap anymore. We're not going to work the ball in the box either. We are going to go a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more wide in our attack just to see if we can um, catch them on the counter a little bit. But it looks like that is going to do it, boys. Sunderland 3, Borussia Dortmund 2. That is a massive result. Even not taking into account the red card, that is absolutely huge. I'll see you at the Leeds game. So we have made a couple of changes to our starting eleven for today's game against Leeds. Obviously, there was only three days in between our Champions League fixture and this one. So I've rested a couple of players. James Garner's come in. In the defensive midfield spot and Batista Maia came in on the left-hand side. Both of them did pretty well coming on against Dortmund. So I felt like it was due a start for them. In terms of their side, Shackleton starting at right back. That is a new one to me. Well, he's versatile. Menard on the left-hand side. French youth player. Look, looks an absolutely fantastic prospect. Whether he's ready for first-team football in the Premier League, I don't know. I think they're pulling a me, basically. £13.5 million sign. He looks decent. Let's get the kick off. Let's see how old boys get on. Hopefully, we we are desperate for a home win in the Premier League. First highlight of the game is a corner for Leeds United. Harrison plays it in and Adam Massina gets his first goal of the season and puts Leeds United 1-0 up. Only seven minutes in. That is hugely disappointing. It's usually us causing teams problems from attacking corners and we've just paid the price there. Come on, boys. Right, I'll not be mad. If he's got a goal, straight away. The ball is kicked up. Reese Nelson wins it. He sets away Sadet and Avci in behind. He goes for goal. And this boy is going to be special. I'm telling you, lads, right now, he is going to be one of the best strikers on this game. And I'm not just saying that because he got a hat trick last game and a goal today. No, I'm not. I'm, just, I'm saying it because it's true. Reese Nelson winning the ball then in the midfield area. Nice little dinked ball over the top. He's got a lot of work to do from this position, though. And that may be a little bit dodgy by the keeper. But we'll take it either way. 1-1. 30 minutes gone. Sergio Gomez wins the ball in the final third. He plays it back to James Garner. Who finds Pugier on the edge. We've got loads of players in the box. And we give the ball away to Moy Gomez. And now they are through. Medi's in behind. That is a fantastic block by Benoit Badia-Shale. And then he kicks it in a head. Listen, I don't mind that. Another highlight now. With long throw in by us. Oh my god, it has gone in. Sardet and Avci with his seventh goal of the season. Let's take... Another look at that. It's a long throw in from Rasmus, Rasmus Nissen Christiansen. It's played in. The keeper comes for it. It's all sorts of craziness. It hits the defender. He stops it on the line. And the slide challenge is enough to put us 2-1 up. That is very dodgy by their goalkeeper. Two goals now as a result of his mistakes, at least in my opinion. And yet he's on a 6.7. Not sure how that works. As Batista Maia puts it in a corner. Perez getting his head and it going just wide. Now we have a boy, Sunderland 2, Leeds United 1, a fantastic comeback after a disappointing first 10 minutes or so. We'll gee the boys up, no changes made at half time and uh, we'll see how the second half does for us. Sergio Gomez injured, fantastic, Chiardi can come on, that's the nice thing. 
we've got an absolutely fantastic replacement for Sergio Gomez now in uh, Chiarte. Let's see if he can make any time he managed to get on the pitch count. First highlight of the second half. Another long throw in by Christiansen. Pugier, oh my God, is that offside? It's got to be offside. There's absolutely nowhere that stands. And the keeper rightly rules it out. Not the keeper, the referee. 65 minutes gone. Leeds United on the attack down this right-hand side with Harrison. Gives the ball away to Chiarte. He finds the ball at Abchi. Can he get himself two hat-tricks in today's game? He certainly can't. Not at this occasion anyway. He's got 25 minutes left. We are going to drop down to a more balanced team mentality from attack and Chiarte are going close there from the free kick. Just purely because Leeds do look a little bit dangerous on the counter and we don't really want to give them the opportunities. Batista Maya, he can come off for Unavar. Uh, Rasmus Nissen Christiansen can come off for Bali Mumba, who is of course our back right back for this season. And a uh, little bit disappointing to not be starting the likes of Bali Mumba and George Dobson. But... Uh, Change must come when you start progressing as we are. Sunderland 2, Leeds United 1 with only 5 minutes remaining. And now we have ourselves a penalty. Mathis Pugier is taken down in the box cruelly. And Avchi steps up for his hat-trick. Two hat-tricks in two games. I was just whinging about his form at the start of this episode. And he has well and truly proved me wrong. Sunderland 3, Leeds United 1. That is game over. And there we have it then. Another three points at the Stadium of Light. We will take that. All day long, we'll tell the boys we are buzzing because we are, and we will move on. So this is how the Premier League table sits after those games. Well, one game. We are now move ourselves up to ninth into the top half. So the board will hopefully give me a little bit more breathing space. They're not too disappointed so far, but they have been disappointed in some of our defeats. Um, so we do need to keep that in mind. I don't want to get sacked. So a top half finish is mandatory. But of course, Champions League is where the bonuses come. We sit in second, just behind Benfica in our group after only one game's played. Uh, in terms of the next episode, it won't be the Monaco. It'll probably be this Benfica game, I think. And then that Monaco game will be the final. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So Benfica at home next or away or at home. I'm not sure. I'll tell you what, we've got to do the Newcastle game. They've been our rivals. <laughs> well, they are our rivals. But not just because they're our local rivals. We got promoted. First in the championship, they were second. The season after that, we both qualify for the Champions League. I wonder how they're doing in the Champions League. It's a little bit crazy to newly promoted sides getting into it. They drew against Napoli away from home in their first game. FC Copenhagen beat Real Madrid. Okay, whatever. But uh, maybe the Newcastle might end up uh, qualifying, which will be interesting. I'm not going to say I'll be happy about it. So yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll come back for the Benfica game and the Newcastle United game but anyway boys if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy